Welcome to 360 Degree Live Show. Today we are having with us a very inspiring woman, a polyphacetic young woman, entrepreneur, model, and CEO of an NGO, Sarin Manchanda. Thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. We are going to be talking about a little bit about your, your career because you are very young, but you are a very inspiring woman. You traveled to Mumbai to become an actress, but then you decided to create the Sarin Manchanda Foundation in 2018 to improve the quality of uh, poor people that is living in some areas in Mumbai. And I'm asking why, why this change? This, because it was really, really big change for being, becoming an actress and then creating an NGO. Can you tell us what's motivated to you to this change? Yeah, because, you know, um, as you see, becoming an actress, um, it's like a fairy tale. You feel like you'll go to Bombay and you'll become, you'll end up becoming an actress. But uh, that's not true. You have to uh, go through a lot of hard times and then you realize it's not easy for someone to come from Marshall and just do auditions and become an actress, you know. So I thought because uh, my father um, being a politician, um, so my mother telling me that, uh, you know, just help people, do good to others, then good things will start happening in your life. So I thought maybe, you know, I can have my own production house and make me first uh, earn my money and uh, do good to people, make my political career and then become a politician, start my own production house and then launch myself. So it all started from there. And then, of course, my parents' morals and values uh, always do good to others and good things happen to you. And um, I also feel we live in a society and we have a lot of responsibility for the society. It's not only for our parents or for our you know, siblings or for our family, it's for the society. We have to give back. Otherwise, there is no use and there is no uh, value of living uh, just like that, only for yourself and only for your welfare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very honorable. And really, there is a lot of things to do in India, uh, especially in terms of poor people. There's a big, big problem in India. I, I've been several times there and, and really, for me, it's shocking because we are living like in different worlds. Which are the main challenges that you are facing now in your foundation? Because especially after COVID, I feel situation much be, has been much worse now than before. Uh, after COVID, you know what happened? I were, we took around 150 programs in RA Islam. And what happened in my life, I was just doing the social work because I, ma I made the Zarin Manchanda Foundation. So I was only keen to help people and I was enjoying it so much that I was thinking, you know, uh, one day the media will capture me, one day the good things will start happening to me, one day the people will know me. Uh, but um, uh, after the COVID, when I started taking the program in Andheri West, and uh, the media just caught me. And uh, I got a call from Ashtag, I got a call from ZTV, I got a call from Times of India, I got a call from India Today News Channel, I got a call from NDTV, from everywhere. And this is like, I always say goodness is the only investment that never fails. So when you put goodness into your life, into the world, you create happiness for people, you're doing God's job, then everything starts, the miracles uh, start happening in your life. Yeah, so, that's, so that's how mm -hmm. it happened. And yeah, then started, yeah. Course, yeah. All the things started happening by doing good to others. Yeah. So uh, right now, people is facing especially. I I saw you have different different pro programs in your foundation, in terms of education, health, and also food. Because as you are saying, you started giving foods to people in in COVID. No, although I feel that there should be many restrictions in terms of how to access to them and. Um, I, I guess you cannot put so many people in the same place, no, for preserving the distance. It should be difficult to manage. Yeah, lots of difficulty. In fact, I used to do it in my own society. And sometimes the people used to call the police that what is she doing and why is she gathering so many people? And mm -hmm. uh, the police used to come and they used to say, ma'am, stop it. It will creating, it will create more COVID and the society can have, uh, you know, coronavirus. 
so i went to uh, police station many times to just solve this pro- problem you know because mm-hmm. if you just call 50 people then 100 people used to come and if you call just 80 people then 200 people used to come and it was so difficult for me and uh, even with the police restriction when you are just want to call 50 the other the 50 people will say other 50 people oh the program is happening here so many times i had to face a lot of problems lot of society restrictions lot of police police used to come and just say ma'am you are doing good to people but you have to understand all the situations why don't you go to the slum areas and do it but for me the problem was i my immune system is so weak and if i go to slum area then thousands of people will come you know and if i get sick then this will all end so i had to take it in my society and we took around 250 programs in andheri books wow giving them food we giving them medicines giving them clothes and giving them food all alternate alternately alternatively every single day i mean uh-huh. like uh, yeah so we did a lot and i think that's why the foundation became top most in the country and in the world because i think when you do good i mean it's not only the media who recognize it's like the overseas media that recognized uh, my work and we started getting calls from london new york paris russia everywhere that ma'am why don't you bring your foundation work here in south africa in fact uh, i got a call yesterday only from uh, ieto which is uh, they want me to be one of the us ambassadors from india just seeing my social service you know so oh, it brought me a long nice. way yeah very nice Yeah. I see you have like three phases in your in your organization. Uh, so now, in which phase you are? Because I ob- obviously, with more incomes, with more investors, you can get more people. So, in which phase you are now? Because I I also saw that you want to create like a place, like an ambulance, no, or a medical center in the areas that are providing people uh, doctors and medicine, as you are saying. So, which are the necessities that your foundation is uh, needing at this moment? Ah, uh, see, for that, see, right now, whatever I did, it was more of my pocket money because uh, we don't have a ATG. Okay, so we get a lot of food donation, we get a lot of clothing donation, we got a lot of uh, uh, money, but not in the high scale money because the high scale money you only get after ATG. You know, it's a certificate that you can't take a uh, hundred crore or two hundred crore or even one crore. like if you, if you don't have that certificate so we are still waiting we have got a 12 day now we mm-hmm. are waiting for atg so i think next month we are just waiting to get atg even in this governor award that i got recently uh, mm-hmm. they have promised to give me the atg so if it comes faster then of course uh, the ambulance and the hospitals and the old age homes and the orphanage and you know uh, institutes and schools will only start uh, i can only start after atg because of course we need a lot of funding for that and of course uh, the things will happen slowly and the media will come to know you people will come to know so it's all in the queue all in the queue but i think the okay. ambulance is going to start very very soon the ambulance will start soon but we need a lot of funding to do all this the funding will only come up in yeah so yeah i i i think uh, this will be amazing for for these areas this this very very poor areas in in india where you are working and uh, my question is how are you managing all this because you you are model actor ceo and have a foundation so it is is really hard work how are you managing this I think God is managing it. I'm seriously like I don't know. I like you know. Sometimes people ask me, "What do you do?" Sometimes I have to say, "I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a philanthropist. I'm into modeling. I'm in. I have interior company. I have a production house. I have a luxury catering company. You know, I have a cafe. I'm making another cafe. I'm making another restaurant. You know, so it is like a. I'm. I'm a shoe shopper in Bombay Times Fashion Week on 15. So you know, it is a. Now, of course, so so many things, and some of the things I just forget. Like what to say, you know, my life journey. Like I told God, please give me work. I want to work, but He gave me so much of work that it has now become <laughs> like a, you know, like sometimes people ask me, how do you handle? I don't know, but I think God is handling for me for sure. Because for a normal person, I think it's very difficult. Yeah, it's like for life thing one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because if you get into one profession, it becomes so difficult. How can you handle so many? You know. 
but uh, uh, I got a call from BRICS also, if you know, it was uh, like uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China. They also want me to be heading Bombay. So I think a lot of things happen in my life through social work. So that's why I always say that if you want to succeed in life, be kind. Don't do everything for yourself. Don't do everything for your family. The whole world is your family. And it is your duty to do something. Not only for the, I mean, if you can't do it for the world, don't do it. If you don't, can't do it for the society, don't do it. But at least for your servants, you know, for the labor who's working in your home, do something. It is the duty. It is your duty. And if you're not fully fulfilling your duty, it means like God is not going to be so kind. Like people say, why, how you're doing all this? I'm getting through my uh, social work because God is happy because I'm doing his job, right? I'm making him happy. So when, once he's happy, he, he's going to give me immense, you know. So that's why he's going to give me energy. He's going to give me uh, uh, the you know ability to you know do all this and uh, uh, do everything in life because he is doing it. He just holds my hand and say, "Baby, you have to do this. Baby, you have to do that." And I'm everywhere. I'm doing everything, and it's the energy of God for on for being on it. It's the energy of God. That is very inspiring. India society is very traditional, especially with the place that women should occupy. Uh, surely. Many women look at you like a very modern, ambitious woman that has very clear what she wants for her life. Is it a challenge to be an entrepreneur woman in India? Um, it is a challenge, but if you are a good person and you are uh, very close to God, then nothing is uh, difficult because, of course, they are your competitors are there. Nobody wants a woman to be, you know, like uh, an uh, inspiring woman or. Uh, you know, ruling, uh, ruling the country or ruling, uh, even in the entrepreneurship, I've got awards like a rising entrepreneur of the country. So not everybody, because there are so many competitors. Oh God, this girl is everywhere. This girl is getting award for this and that. It becomes very difficult. But of course, they, I know because I always say, God, you know, my mom is very, very, sometimes she feels very insecure that, you know, what is going to happen with her? She's too young and she's in Bombay. Uh, but uh, I think there's a power of God that protects me. Otherwise, of course, they, they are your competitors. They are, they are looking at your work. So it becomes very difficult. Sometimes I want to land somewhere for opening my restaurant or a cafe, but I don't get it because it's Zareen Manjanda is coming. So there are people who will, but at the end of the day, there's God and it happens. You feel around and by and people, in spite of the, all the good work you are doing, you feel that some people is competing with you. This is very amazing because uh, I feel you are doing an amazing job for people and it should be inspiring and admiring, not... not. A lot of people love me. A lot of people don't do this. A lot of people are jealous also. No? They will try to harm you. They will, don't, they will not want this luxurious... I am like, uh, yesterday I got an article in Times of India that uh, my cafe, I launched a seven-star cafe in the whole India. Now, who is going to love, like that this young girl comes and launches a seven-star cafe in the whole country? Like, what is going on? So, if I do another cafe like this, they will have some insecurity, right? Oh God, if she can make first mm -hmm. cafe and that becomes so big in India, then if she makes the second one, that's going to be a bigger one. That's going to be a more luxurious one. What, what is going to happen? She's going to rule slowly, you know, and she's going to be the biggest. So, of course, a lot of people are jealous and a lot of people are very sweet and a lot of people are supporting also. It's like both sides. Is it hard to be in the media? I mean, being on the spot? It is hard to to live with a lot of media uh, right now, no? Because it, it, it has become all of a sudden this this famous, no? Being rising star, yeah. they call you even uh, they are co comparing you to Lady D, Lady Diana and other people. So it must be big responsibility for you also. Yeah, yeah, a lot of things. You know, I've started. Well, I have four bouncers with me walking everywhere. You know, I never used to walk with bouncers. Now I have four bouncers. I can't. You know, if somebody comes to a house, I get scared. Like who is there? Because I've got so many enemies. They are very. They are a lot of supporters. But there are so many enemies. I mean, media, tells, media tells me like, uh, you know, ma'am, a lot of people come. Like, why is she everywhere in the media? Why are we not there? So the media says because she's doing the work. She's putting the videos. She, the work is seen. Where is your work? 
you know so that's why she's everywhere and because uh, she has the whole she's the whole package i mean you also do the same you will also be everywhere so there are, it's not a ma- lot of enemies like it's not that the whole country is going to love me and the whole world is going to love yeah. me yeah that, that's like that no you but normally i'm i'm sure you will get more love than than hate but hate is more noisy <laughs> yeah but you know i'm not scared because of course i know god is with me my parents blessings are with me you media people blessings are with me and uh, though every everybody's blessings are with me so i'm not afraid of anything but i know you are right there are a lot of difficulties for a woman to be successful i think it you you must be know you are you are self empowered woman so i think when a woman is empowered and she is doing so many things and not only one thing of course people have eye on you i mean especially when you are in the media all the time and if you see my articles everywhere 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 the media writes i'm the media darling you know i'm the media star so the girls who came with me who were struggling and i suddenly became a media star they must a lot of people will be jealous oh my god what is happening yeah But i must say whatever happened happened with the blessings of people it is not me who did it so early you know because i uh, i'm also planning to uh, come into politics i am also planning to uh, uh, fight in another elections i will i'm also planning to do a lot of things because uh, uh, social work is limited okay you don't have the power to make the roads you don't have a power to make the bridge you don't have a power if people say you don't have a water supply you don't have that power right as a social yeah so, that only you can do in a politician that yeah, only yeah. you can yeah <laughs> yes so i was planning to come into politics yes that was one of the questions i i want to make to you Nini, uh, the daughter of an influential man has opened doors for you or made your path a little bit more complicated sorry yeah being the daughter of a very influential man because your father was also a politician oh, yeah. and a politician has made your your path your your career more difficult or it was easier what do you think it, it could help you or or make it more complicated see nobody helps you with your father's name nobody does yeah. and when i came to bombay i was very i was very stubborn and i knew that i will never use my father's name because uh i never want to be known as mr dash daughter you know that i was always known as oh your father is this your father is that i struggled i worked hard i came here alone nobody was with me i only started my foundation with my small pocket money nobody helped me my father wanted me back he never wanted wanted me here to struggle and be something he said that you are a princess why are you going there and doing all that so i received everything i gained everything with my own struggle it is me who have achieved the height so if i say uh, my father's name nobody in maharashtra knows who my father is if you see all my articles it's only written that he she's the daughter of a prominent politician nobody knows my father is mm-hmm. so i've never taken my father father's name and your father's name will just help you okay she is her daughter but then what work she has done you know like if you see i okay if i give you the example of amita bachchan look at abhishek bachchan you know so yes. it's not about your father is something and you become something in maharashtra in india nobody knows who your father is I think even you don't know his name. I think. No, <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know so much about Indian politician as much to say. Yeah, <laughs> also, so I'm, I'm, I'm I have never, I have never revealed his name. I don't know yes. him as his daughter. I'm very proud of my father. Uh, he's a prominent politician. He is one of the biggest uh, in the country. But I don't want to be known as his daughter. I will never say. Unless the uncle is a need that okay, you know, it's a government thing that who's out you are, and if the media finds out, then it's a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you have been uh, recognized with many awards, and as you were saying, and many magazines, important international magazines also contacting you, uh, and you have received very important prizes and awards. So, which was the recognition that made you feel more excited, especially excited? Of course, for the social work, you know, I got a entrepreneur CEO of the year award, national award. I got a young inspiring woman award from Times of India. I got a young woman entrepreneur in multiple expansions, business expansion. I got a, a award from the governor recently for the social service, you know. So I think, of course, for the social work, 
you feel good because you have done something good. You're not living for yourself, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're doing, you are contributing to the society. And you know that goodness uh, will just uh, uh, drive, you know, divert back. You, the lot of good things will start happening in your life now. I know I will be very, very big only because I do goodness. It's, it is my strength, you know, because if I don't do a program, if I don't do a charity program and I'm everywhere, I know that I will come down. If I, if, if I'm sitting with a poor person, I'm making him happy and I'm nowhere in the media, nothing. I know that there is going to be a very big thing happening with me because ultimately he will give me his blessings and with his blessings, it will connect God and there will be somebody who will come with me or something very big will happen in my life. So that I know. So it's all about social service. It's all about contribution in the happiness of people. And uh, I want to leave a legacy. I don't want to die like this. Okay, Zareen Manchanda was born and she died and she was famous. I want to be known as somebody like Nelson Mandela. I want to be known as somebody who came, who did so much. I think it's very difficult to uh, be, I mean, a lot of youngsters, when they only struggle to be rich and famous, they should also know the path of rich and famous is uh, goodness. It is about making people happy. That, that is equally important. And that will ma create miracles and you will rise, uh, you will be famous all over the world. And your uh, you will sleep in the night with a smile on the face. Like you will not sleep in the night, oh God, it's only living for yourself and just sleeping and just, I don't know how li people live. I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> for me uh, to do good to others, give me the most happiness and I know the God will take care of the rest. I mean, the world best things are going to come in my life only if I'm doing good to people. If I stop doing it, it will all vanish. Yeah, this is very inspiring how you are thinking. And changing completely, uh, because I, I saw that you are now created, you created a, a production house, as you said, and you are working in a short, short film, Me Too Meets Ari. Me Too Meets not... Ari, yeah. that's an American movie. Uh, Ari is like a neighborhood, or, or, or uh, what is Ari? Because I, for me, it's, it's, Ari is, uh, is in Mumbai, or what is this? Yeah. It's a slum mm -hmm. area. I started my social work from that area. Yeah. And I, you know, it's, it's a, it's a destiny, you know, I, 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 as I told you, I came here to become an actress. So what happened was I was sitting in JW Marriott and there was a foreigner who was sitting there and I, it was the last day I said, Oh God, I'm going to leave and quit acting and I want to turn into social work and politics because this is not happening to me in Bombay. So what happened? There was a foreigner sitting and he was an American producer. And uh, I told my manager to just go and talk to him. What maybe, you know, something happens through him, you know, who knows your destiny. And uh, uh, my manager went to him and he said that, you know, like uh, it's, it's Karin Manchanda and she uh, she is, a, you know, struggling actress. And uh, if you're a producer, you know, if you like to, you know, cast her or something. So he just came to me and uh, he said, excuse me, what's your name and I, what do you do? I said, my name is Zareen Manchanda and I'm a, a politician because I got a post in politics, a general general secretary in Congress party that time. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm a politician. And he said, oh my God, can I have a seat with you, madam? Because he was American and he thought I'm a big politician in the country, but I had a good post, but not like as big you know, as I'm today. So uh, then he said that I'm looking for a face and your face suits the role and let's start with the movie. So I think it also happened through goodness because I was doing a lot of charity programs that time. I was doing a lot of goodness for people. So it's all started from there. Uh, do you do you have more projects in your mind or or um, yeah let's wait what is happening in, in life. Do you have any other actress program uh, project or uh, so, uh, yeah no I'm actually uh, I have been signed as a brand ambassador for some very big brand that I'm going to disclose only after they tell me to, you know, it's a protocol, you cannot say it. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm doing a Bombay Times Fashion Week. I've already, already been a showstopper before. And uh, we are planning to do a music album uh, with a very oh. well-known singer yeah, in the country. So that also like it is with uh, some media house and they have told me not to tell before, you know, it comes. So it's Okay, we are waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, maybe next time when you take my interview, I'll tell you. Okay, that, let's make it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, which, which advice would you give to women that want to be entrepreneur in India? Advice is uh, be an entrepreneur in India. Think about goodness. Goodness will take you to be the one of the biggest entrepreneurs, not in India, but in the world. Be good to your parents first, be good to your family first, and then be good to India, your own country, or maybe your own country, whatever Spain, maybe whatever the country you are, and then be good to the whole world. That will take you another level of entrepreneurship. Yeah, that's, that's very nice. Sarin, it was really a pleasure to, to share with you this, this time. And I, I encourage you because I, I know you don't need encourage, to be encouraged because you are very active and very inspiring woman. But yeah, thank you for, for doing all these good things for the world. And so hope, to see you, hope to see you soon in Transcontinental Times with more projects and more stories to tell us. And for all of you, bye for now. Thank you.